Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we're going to add Fornaf reports to our extension. As we have determined in earlier Coffee Breaks, you, may, you have many tools to make Fornaf reports. However, when it comes to source control and DevOps, there is no substitute for a VS Code extension. To demonstrate adding Fornav reports to an extension, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will create a new extension and add source control. In step three, I will create and edit a new report. In step four, I will store the custom layouts and Fornav setup. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will work on a Business Central on-premise server with the Business Central 2023 Wave 2 release. I've installed the universal code version of the Fornav customizable report pack, and I've executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today will work on a cloud environment as well. I have also installed the Fornav designer, Visual Studio Code, and Git. The first thing we need to do is set up our extension for Fornav reports. I've created a new empty extension with VS Code. The only thing I need to do to be able to add Fornav reports to this extension is to add a dependency to the Fornav core extension. If you want to clone standard Fornav reports as well, or use functions from the Fornav report pack, then you need the dependency on the customizable report pack extension. So let's go to VS Code where I've created a new extension. So what I did is just uh, opened a new folder and did the AL go that gave me a new extension. In that new extension, I have added a git ignore uh, because we're going to uh, add git to this extension just to show you how it works when you add four nav reports to, uh, to git source control. It's not mandatory, uh, but it is very useful. So that's pretty much all I did. I downloaded the uh, AL packages, obviously, from Business Central. So first thing I'm going to do is enable Git for this folder. And I'm just going to work with the local Git at the, at the moment. Um, and all I need to do is do a Git init. You will notice Git ignore and app.json will become green. And in my Git, in my uh, taskbar, I've got uh, a couple of changes. I've got an app.json which has been added and a git ignore which has been added. So I'm going to add both of these here and commit them. And that means that git is now set up to track changes in uh, my extension. So the second thing I need to do is to add these dependencies that I've talked about. And to do so, I'm going to type really quickly. There we go. I've got two dependencies. I'm adding the Fornav core, and every Fornav report that's in um, that's in a VS Code extension needs needs a dependency on the Fornav core uh, because that contains the uh, the code for the heavy lifting of the rendering of the reports. And uh, if you need to, you have the dependency on the Fornav customizable report pack. And if you, like I said, clone standard Fornav reports, that's something you need because it contains a ton of functions that standard Fornav reports need. And of course, you can use all of those functions inside your own reports as well. And that's functions to get, um, get VAT lines and, and all of that sort of stuff. So that's all I need to do. I'm going to save this. And then it says I need to download my symbols. So I will download symbols. That gives me my customizable report pack and Fornav core. And you will notice that my app.json has been changed. My dependencies have been added. So I will add those to Git quickly. There we go. And that's all I need to do to set up an extension. Now, if you use Fornav in an older DLL installation, then you don't need a dependency on the Fornav core at all, but you do need a setup for the Fornav DLL. I won't discuss that in today's coffee break, uh, but we have some knowledge base articles on how to add DLLs to your, uh, to your uh, VS Code extensions. Now 
The next step, of course, is what you're all here for, here for uh, to create a new report and save it in our extension. So I will just open Fornaf. I have set up Fornaf uh, to connect to my sandbox uh, or to my Docker container and to VS Code. So I will just hit new, grab a new report from a template, and I will use the sales orders per customer. Uh, it's going to take a while to generate. Now, of course, when you're waiting for it, it seems very, very long. So I've got my new report here. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the object number because the object range in my extension is different from what 4NF uses by default. And I will call my report the PTE coffee list. And of course, to be complete, I'm going to add a caption as well. Caption being the friendly name of the report. That's what everybody sees when they run the report. And that's all I need to do to create this report. Now I'm going to save this report. And instead of saving as an object on the server, which packages and publishes the report directly in Business Central, I'm going to say save as. And I will find my coffee break folder. There we go. So this is the source folder of my extension. And you can save the reports AL file directly in the source folder of your extension, or you can create subfolders. Um, that doesn't matter. I'm just going to save it straight into the source folder of my extension. And there we go. It's been saved. I will close it. Go back to VS Code. And you will notice right here I've got two new files, uh, three actually. Um, first one is the AL file of the report. Uh, let's just find it in the normal view. It's a bit easier to see. This is the uh, report's AL file, and you see Fornav generates everything that you need. Uh, all of the calculated fields and uh, and all sorts of stuff. And you will see in the auto-generated code of 4NAV, which uh, it says here, please do not delete or modify. We mean it. If you delete this stuff, uh, the report won't work. You will see that uh, uh, 4NAV calls the 4NAV report management code unit, and that's a code unit in the 4NAV core, and that's why you need the dependency to the 4NAV core. So that's the uh, report's AL file. And if you want, you can change all of this. You can add code and everything. Uh, you can change everything in this report, uh, apart from uh, you shouldn't delete these columns and you should not mess with the code that's underneath the auto-generated code warning. Everything else you can uh, you can play around with and change. And if you do change something and break something, just open the report in the Fornav Designer and save it again, and the auto-generated code will be generate, generated again. That's the AL file, and then in the layouts, I've got two files. I've got my docx file, and the docx file contains the actual layout of the report, which is connected to the AL file through the word layout uh, property. Uh, that that tells me where the where the layout is, and you can change this layout and move it into a different folder. But if you do so, you need to change the uh, layout property in here as well to point to the correct folder. I've also got a JSON file, and a JSON file is not mandatory. You don't always get it, but I added it uh, because it's really useful when you work with uh, with VS Code, especially when you work with uh, with source control, because this gives me a JSON representation of the entire report. And if I make any changes, I can see what has been changed and who has changed it in here. And I'm going to do that in a minute. So for now, this is done. Now let's commit this to GitHub. I keep committing this stuff to GitHub so you can see what happens when I make changes to my report. So there we go, that's been changed. Now I can publish my extension to Business Central. There we go. Which means that in Business Central, uh, 
if everything logs in. I have my four nav my reports and in the my reports we will find the coffee list we've just created and if I run it there we go we have the uh, the coffee list that we created so that's how you create a new report in for now then of course we want to edit the report uh, because that's that's what we want to do now if I want to edit the built-in report I've created a new report with a built-in layout if I want to edit that I need to open this report from the four and a half designer and in the four and a half designer I find my coffee break uh, my source folder and there I find my PTE coffee list dot report dot al and I'm going to open that and if I open that I can change some stuff Let's make this in blue. Uh, let's. Uh, I want the curry board. Uh, let's say I want to show the language in here instead of today. I make these changes and then I cannot preview. preview I cannot preview directly because obviously I am editing a local file which is not in Business Central yet, so I can't preview it directly. So to set to get this report into Business Central, I need to save my report, go to my VS Code extension, and in my VS Code extension, you can see I've changed some stuff around, which is the magic of Git, and what I changed around, you can see right here. It's changed some, uh, some stuff in the, uh, in the report AL file, and I have made some changes in the layout. You can see I've changed the uh, the background color here. If I scroll down, you will see that I've changed the source expression here from curreport.today to curreport.language. And that really is why I, uh, I bothered with Git at all today, to show you how important and how useful it is uh, to enable your reports in, uh, in Git. Uh, so you can actually see what's happened and who changed what. I can publish this extension. Which ends up inside Business Central. And you can see this is a bit time consuming, which is a bit annoying when you uh, when you need to do a lot of changes. So find our for now reports, select the report, run and preview. And that's a lot of work just uh, just for a simple preview. Uh, we can do this a lot simpler. There we go. Change the way we wanted to. We can do this a lot simpler by simply opening a custom layout for the report. and make our change let's go for green preview and when we logged in we will see our preview which is now green. Now the only problem is that what we have changed right now is a custom layout of the report and not the built-in layout. So what I would need to do in order to get this into the, uh, into the built-in layout is go to save as and save as a docx file. And there we go. Uh, go find my extension folder again and open the layout folder and in the layout folder i can simply override the built-in layout and hit save yes i want to replace this which means that if i now open the report al file which opens in turn the built-in layout you can see that the built-in layout has been changed And the built-in layout is now green. So that's a quick way of editing your layout and previewing really quickly. Um, I got one question. 
which I spotted from the corner of my eye. How do I create the layout.json file? You can create that in the settings, go to the designer settings and set automatically save a JSON representation of the layout for source control. I always have it switched on because it's so incredibly useful. Finally, I'm going to show you a quick trick to get all of your four and a half uh, layouts and set up into your source control as well. Uh, as you know, we may do a lot uh, of custom layout, uh, of custom reporting, uh, th just through custom report layouts and four and a half setup. You want to get that into source control. And the way to do that is to open the four and a half setup page. And in the 4NAV setup, we have an action to create a backup across company. I'm going to select export all, and we have discussed the backup in depth in an earlier coffee break. I'm going to copy my backup and go back into my extension folder. And I'm going to place my Forna backup.zip file right here in my extension folder. I will extract it. I use 7-zip, but you can use Windows zip or any other zip program that you might want to use. There we go. That means I've got my Forna backup in here. And if we view this in VS Code, you will see that in the 4NAV backup, I have all of my setup, I have all of my layouts, and I have all of my language, and it's all split up per company. So again, a simple way to get all of your setup in, uh, in source control, so you can see what's been changed, who's changed it, and you can, uh, you can actually get it back when somebody messes something up, which is uh, one of the most useful parts of source control. So let's recap what we just did. The first step to adding 4NAV reports to an extension is to create an extension and add the dependencies to the 4NAV core and, when necessary, the customizable report pack. After that, we could create a new report, save it in our extension, publish, and use it. We found that we could edit the layout quickly by using a custom layout. And after editing the custom layout, we stored the custom layout in the extension, which updated the built-in layout. Finally, we store the backup of all of the 4NAV setup, custom layouts, and more in the extension folder. Thank you for listening to me so far. I can see we don't have any further questions, so I'm going to wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know more about 4NAV, or if you want to download the 4NAV designer and converter, please visit our website. If you want to install 4NAV in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about 4NAV on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about 4NAV, please email them to support at 4NAV.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit 4NAV.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for listening to me today and goodbye.